Hello, everyone. Good day and welcome to today's webinar on Top Klaus, new state of the art in software recovery. This webinar is brought to you by Halder Topso and Comprimo. We joined forces in bringing Top Klaus to the market and are today delighted to provide you with an opportunity to get the technical and commercial insight to the Top Klaus technology. Before we get started, I would like to introduce you to the people that are talking to you today. Franz Jensen, all the top sales senior licensing manager, and Andrew Phipps Jones, Comprimo business development manager, are going to take you through the introduction of Top Klaus. And they are supported by Rasmus Breivik, SVP Clean Air and Sulfur at Holder Top Cell, and myself, Frank Scheel, SVP Comprimo at Worley. Before I give the floor to our presenters, I would like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. When you joined today's webinar, you selected to join either by phone call or computer audio. If for any reason you would like to change your selection, you can do so by accessing your audio pane in the control panel. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenters by typing your questions in the questions pane in the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time. We will collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. And with this said, I give the control to Andrew and friends. Thank you. Thank you, Frank, and uh, welcome everybody to uh, the presentation uh, on Top Klaus, new state in the art of sulfur recovery. So our agenda for today, we'll have a, a quick look on the uh, current industry trends, um, and then we'll give you a brief introduction to our top class technology. Uh, and then we'll, we'll talk about the conventional uh, sulfur recovery technology that we see uh, throughout the world today. Um, and then looking at top class and why this is a, actually a proven technology, despite being maybe a relatively new technology to some of you. Um, Following on from this, we'll look at some case study economics and compare that to a conventional technology, uh, drawing from that a number of, of conclusions. Uh, and then we'll wrap up this session with a question and answer session. So current industry trends, we're seeing sulfur continues to be a significant byproduct from oil and gas upgrading in both refinery, uh, gas plants, and various other processes. Uh, and it, it is a product in its own right, although in, in the oil and gas industry, it really is seen as, a, as, a, as a, a waste product that we have to get rid of. Uh, most new oil and gas field discoveries in today's day and age are actually quite sour and do require a certain amount of cleaning up um, as, as part of bringing the products to market. Uh, there's, there's an ever-increasing tightening of sulfur emission standards, and this is on, on both hydrocarbon products, uh, but also just in general from emissions from refineries, gas plants, production facilities. Uh, and these, these uh, emission standards only ever get tighter. And now with that, also operators are looking to reduce carbon footprint. And sometimes, well, quite often we find the, the reduction in a carbon footprint doesn't really go very well together with the reduction in uh, sulfur emissions. So this is something that is actually quite tricky and, and operators are striving to meet all of these requirements, uh, but yet reducing their capital and operating costs and optimizing their technologies. So uh, Klaus treatment of acid gases, uh, I think uh, everyone is probably familiar with this, this block flows diagram, and I'm not going to talk too much about it, uh, but we typically see uh, maybe a two-stage catalytic Klaus plant combined with a, an amine-based tail gas treating unit, sometimes referred to as a, a BSR MDEA plant or a Scott plant. Uh, and then finally, this goes to an, an incinerator where the gases are, uh, are released into the atmosphere. Now we, we see recoveries of greater than 99.9 percent .9 in terms of self recovery but it does come with it uh, a relatively high capex and opex to get that last few percent of self recovery is, is actually very expensive uh, both in terms of capital expenditure and operational costs 
uh, the, the amine regeneration process we see is a very high energy consumption process. And so with that comes a, a high CO2 carbon footprint. Now our, our new proposed technology, uh, uh, a WSA plant, a wet sulfuric acid based TGTU, uh, does actually take out some of these energy intensive processes while still maintaining a very high sulfur recovery in excess of 99.9%. Uh, we, we've reduced the equipment count, so we've actually lowered the capex and by, by taking out this, uh, this energy intensive uh, process, we've, um, we've actually lowered the carbon dioxide footprint. Uh, we also see there that the, the product that we get from it is still a sulfur product. So we haven't changed the, uh, the, the product and yet we have, we have brought these operational benefits. So the, the, the current technology, a, a conventional uh, amine-based TGTU was, was actually first patented by the Ralph M. Parsons company in 1971, uh, and then other companies quickly followed suit. Um, we've seen incremental improvements throughout the years, but the process largely remains the same. So there may be improvements with, with the amines used, maybe we'll go to a hysterically hindered proprietary amine instead of a, a conventional open art MDEA process, but they're largely the same. And as I do mention, it's, it relies on amines and amine regeneration, which is a very energy intensive process. Now, there are alternatives that exist that may offer lower uh, operational expenditure, maybe capital expenditure. One example would be our super Klaus technology, and we can couple this together uh, with caustic scrubbing, and this will give a, a very uh, very low sulfur emissions uh, but yes the capex is lower but you are creating an additional waste stream that you've got a caustic consumption which has a cost associated with it and then a waste stream that again will need processing so this this might be suitable for for plants that are maybe 10 tons per day but when we look at some of these mega mega size SIUs that are in excess of 500 tons per day it's, they're really not suitable for plants this size So the, our two companies, we, we've come together with this technology now, Comprimo, part of the Wardy Group. Um, in, in 2019, Wardy Parsons acquired Jacobs Energy Chemicals and Resources. Both companies brought with it their own sulfur groups, two, in fact, two of the largest sulfur groups within, in the world. And we're now marketed under the brand name Comprimo uh, with, with decades of experience in sulfur recovery. We've licensed over, it says 600 SIUs here. I, I think the, the total number is actually in excess of a thousand that we've licensed. And we have over 50,000 employees across 51 countries. So we truly are a, a global company with, with a lot of experience. And I'll hand over to Franz. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Uh, some words about the Helder Job Show company. Uh, it was established in 1940. So that's uh, more than 80 years ago. It's a company that specializes in, in catalyst manufacture and, and engineering of, of technologies uh, that have uh, mostly been developed in-house. Uh, we deal with, uh, with production of uh, fertilizers, chemicals and fuels, and that goes both for renewable fuels and, and for fossil fuels. And then we are active also in the air and gas cleaning technologies. When we are talking about the WSA, the wet gas sulfuric acid units, we have we have licensed around 165 units worldwide since 1980. In terms of size, we are around 2,200 employees in 15 countries. Uh, Helder Topso doesn't have a, a, a Klaus technology, but we we felt that our WSA technology could be a very good a supplement to to the Klaus technology as as tail gas treatment. So we joined hands with Comprimo uh, to to 
uh, to develop uh, 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 this new new concept called uh, top clouds. The next slide here shows uh, in the left part a, a, a rather stand, standard clouds unit with a, a, a with two two catalytic reactors. Uh, producing elemental sulfur on the basis of H2S gas and sour water stripper gas. That is, that, is, uh, that is common and I don't think we need, need to deal very much with that uh, in particular. Uh, it can achieve some, somewhere between 95 and 97 percent sulfur recovery efficiency. So there's a tail gas of course that has to be handled and with the top clouds, the tail gas treatment unit is a, is a wet gas sulfuric acid unit uh, that produces sulfuric acid out of the sulfur species in the tail gas. And uh, the sulfuric acid often is not desirable as, as a sep separate product, so that, that can be, be recycled to the, to the inlet of the thermal reactor in the clouds unit. What happens in, in the tail gas unit is first that the tail gas is combusted in a combustor so that uh, all of the sulfur species are converted to SO2. That happens partly in the combustor and partly in, a, in an oxidation reactor with a catalyst arranged after the waste heat boiler. Thereafter, the SO2 is reacted with the oxygen that is that is already in the gas uh, from the combustor. SO2 is, is oxidized to SO3 in an SO2 converter with one or two uh, uh, catalytic beds. After that, we cool down the gas in the WSA condenser. That will make the sulfuric acid that is formed by the SO3 and the water vapor in the gas uh, a condense. We can cool it and and recycle it to the thermal reactor in the Klaus part. And here, very quickly, the sulfuric acid uh, will be decomposed to sulfur dioxide, oxygen, and and water vapor, as shown in the next slide here. The sulfuric acid is is atomized when it is uh, uh, when, when it is introduced in the Klaus furnace, very, very fast, it will evaporate to form sulfuric acid in the gas phase, but that is not stable at a thousand degrees or uh, EC or whatever temperature you, you have in the Klaus furnace. So it will instantaneously decompose to SO3 and water vapor. SO3 also is not stable at the very high uh, temperature, so it will disintegrate into, into water vapor, SO2, and oxygen. And those, those three compounds are, are, are standard components in a, in a Klaus unit. This, this very fast uh, disintegration of the sulfuric acid happens uh, in, in fractions of a second, and that has been it's been demonstrated by by the independent Alberta Sulfur Research Limited in Canada, and it has has also been been verified by dynamic dynamic CFD modeling by HCC Technologies, one of the uh, major suppliers of uh, of Klaus equipment. It has been verified that. Within this this very short short time frame, no sulfuric acid will be able to reach any uh, parts of the plant where it could uh, it could make any any damage. If we look at the reactions taking place in the Klaus furnace, most of the H2S react with air. Uh, it is combusted and to SO2 and, and, and SO2 reacts with more H2S to form sulfur. When you use air, of course, there's all, also nitrogen in the gas. So with the sulfur, you get 12 moles of dilution gas. 
if you apply pure oxygen in in the Klaus reaction, you get only four moles of dilution gas because you don't have any nitrogen. If the reaction takes place with sulfuric acid, you get only slightly more dilution gas uh, uh, than, than if you apply pure oxygen. <clears throat> and that implies that sulfuric acid is, is actually an excellent oxygen carrier, which is not so strange uh, when, you, when you look at the chemical formula, H2SO4, it's act actually more than half of the sulfuric acid that is composed of, of oxygen atoms. Now, in, in a top class unit, it's of course not all of the H2S in the feed that can react with, uh, with sulfuric acid. But anyway, it's about 15%. And that means that you can cut down on the air supply to the Klaus furnace by approximately uh, 20%. And you get uh, a 12% less, less, less tail gas. And that means again that, that the Klaus unit can be made, made smaller than in a, in a conventional uh, Klaus unit. And that saves, of course, on the on the capital expenditure. We have uh, made a count of the equipment uh, in the tail gas treatment. In the middle middle column, you have you have the the amine based uh, the conventional uh, tail gas treatment unit, and to the right you have the WSA based uh, tail gas treatment unit. And we find approximately uh, uh, 28 equipment items in the conventional technology and 19 in the WSA based. Well, that's just numbers, but uh, but very important is it to look at the at the columns uh, row where you uh, you have three columns in the amine based uh, and uh, none in the WSA based, and that. That helps, of course, to keep the cost of the of the tail gas treatment unit down. We have made a case study, Comprimo and and Helder Topso together. That uh, Andrew will uh, will now go uh, go through uh, with you. So as as Franz demonstrated, with with this simple equipment count, we're just able to to demonstrate that we've got less kit, so it should be cheaper. Uh, but what better way to do this than through a case study? Um, so we've we've taken a, a typical refinery um, SRU. This this one was 270 tons per day, um, with with the refinery feed. So sour water stripper, acid gas, and amine acid gas, uh, aiming for greater than 99.9% .9 recovery um, to uh, to evaluate both capex and opex of of, of the plant. Um, uh, so uh, we've done a, a class four factored estimate based on the equipment list on our in-house from our in-house database. Uh, we've we've considered um, facilities only with inside the SRU. There's no uh, external facilities included, so no water treatment, no condensate treatment is included. We've also in excluded things like site preparation. Uh, also, we've, we've not included things like operational staff or self for sale. The, these are considered to be the same for both cases. I, I don't think there's any reason why this would, would differ. Uh, and uh, this is uh, 8,500 operating hours a year is also what's based on. And you, you can see in this table here is, is the uh, utility price we have assumed. Uh, this is uh, taken from a, from a project, so it is an actual, it is actual data. Uh, now I appreciate that where, depending on where you are in the world uh, and the uh, the utilities available to you, these these could vary dramatic uh, dramatically. Uh, but we have set up a, our own economic model, uh, and for clients, we we can update this model relatively quickly and provide uh, an, an accurate uh, cost benefit analysis of a uh, top class plant versus uh, a conventional uh, SIU TGTU. Uh, the, the other thing I will also mention here is this: this was based on an, uh, on a, an acidified MDEA. Uh, so again, this this helps uh, using an acidified MDEA would actually bring some of the equipment sizing down slightly, uh, whereas a, 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 just a, a bog standard MDEA 
would probably increase some of the price uh, further. Uh, and so this is a, a table of our utilities, both consumption and production. I'm, I'm not going to go read through all of these figures. You, you can read for yourselves the, the differences. Uh, but the, the headline numbers, I, I guess, and the, the take home is the consumption marginally more on the on the top class over the uh, class plus amine. Uh, this is this is in part driven by the uh, some of the natural gas consumption. Um, but it's also offset in part against, for example, electric power is lower. So we see, like I say, total consumption is, is 3 million uh, USDs for the top Klaus versus uh, 2.6 million against the Klaus plus uh, TGTU, conventional TGTU. Now, if we go on to look at the production, well, okay, the production for conventional is 3.3 million but uh, for a top class, much, much higher, 4.8 million. So we have a, a much greater HP steam production and also a much, much greater LP steam production. And the, these, uh, these, these are kind of explained in part um, by, yes, okay, so there is a slightly greater natural gas consumption, but also on the back end, the, the incinerator stack gas temperature is a lot, lot cooler in a, in a WSA plant than what can be achieved with a conventional incinerator, with an incinerator on a conventional plant. So the headline figure, if you like, the net operating income from a conventional plant we see in around 700,000 uh, versus a top class of uh, 1.7, 1.8 million. So quite a, quite a market difference. And this, uh, this, like I say, is, is over the course of the year. So um, plugging this in together with all all of the other numbers, uh, so I've got the, we've got the capex estimate here. Like I said, these we're not going into the actual detail behind this because these have been developed from our in-house uh, proprietary information. Uh, but for a, a Klaus plus amine, just under 70 million uh, US dollars uh, capex estimate versus a top Klaus, which just under 62 million. So there, there is a, a definite saving to be made here on the capex greater than 10%, 12, 13, 14%. Uh, and like I say, this, this is uh, compared to a, an, an acidified MDEA TGTU. So we could potentially expect a, a saving on top, uh, over and above a, a regular MDEA based TGTU. Operating income I've, I've just discussed. Uh, the, the maintenance estimates are factored off the capexes, so there is a, a slight difference there. Uh, catalyst and chemicals, we, we went back and we, we calculated it out and they came at pretty much the same price, so no real difference there between the catalyst and chemicals. Uh, but over a, an NPV calculation over 10 years, we're, we're seeing a, a 20 million USD saving for the client. So a, a significant saving here can be made uh, on top Klaus over a, a Klaus plus amine plant. So some of the features that we're seeing now is, is it's a very simple, robust and efficient process um, where, where we've got fewer control valves, there's fewer parameters to control, it is more simple and it is robust and efficient. Uh, we're, we're reaching a self-recovery uh, of 90, greater than 99.9%, .9%, what is now considered to be an, an industry standard, uh, and we can produce everything as elemental sulphur. Now, there is an alternative to have a small product stream of sulfuric acid and if you're a refinery and you, you may have a, a use for sulfuric acid uh, then there is a, a, an option there but uh, I think most clients wouldn't want to have to deal with two different product streams so it's very important we, we are maintaining one product stream still with no other byproducts. We have a small Klaus unit, a smaller Klaus unit because of the recycle uh, of the sulfuric acid that Franz talked about, This the oxygen carrying capabilities of sulfuric acid. It does help to debottleneck the plant and give you either give you a smaller plant or if it's a revamp, you might decide to actually use the opportunity to debottleneck the, uh, the Klaus unit as well. And as I mentioned, we have no waste streams. Uh, there, are, there are no other um, streams from from the plant, um, and then as we mentioned before, with this with this large amount of steam pro uh, production, really high thermal efficiency, 
with a really good HP and LP Steam export. And back to France. Yes, uh, to mention some uh, conclusions and, and reflections on the top clouds. Well, it's a combination of two of two well-known processes: uh, the 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 energy-efficient uh, WSA and uh, and and the well well-proven uh, clouds process. You can achieve a sulfur recovery that is higher than 99.9 percent, .9%, and you can convert all of the sulfur compounds in into sulfur. You can go as high as 99.99% sulfur recovery if that should be required. You have a flexibility in in the production because the the WSA uh, its tail gas unit is relatively uh, uh, easy to accept uh, very variations in the in the tail gas flow and composition it can handle also also uh, smaller peaks in the in the amount of sulfur compounds the top class has between 10 and 30 percent lower capex compared to a conventional uh, tail gas treatment unit uh, a class plant uh, the the case uh, study that you just saw had about 12, 13% lower capex, but it can go as high as 30, especially if you don't uh, make use of, of the specialized amines in the, in the conventional uh, tail gas unit. The OPEX are significantly lower because you have uh, more, more energy recovery from the top clouds than from a conventional unit, and that gives you a more attractive net present value. The technology is suitable for for new new projects, but all, also for also for revamps. If you, for example, ha have a, a cloud unit that <clears throat> doesn't have have quite the capacity, it it would be nice to have, and maybe also a little bit low uh, sulfur recovery efficiency. Then, then you could make make a revamp with a WSA uh, tail gas treatment unit to make it make it a top class. You would gain something like 15% additional ca capacity and uh, and a better sulfur recovery efficiency. And uh, both the the class and and the WSA uh, are based on 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 well well proven technologies and the integration of them is is demonstrated uh, both by uh, both by by testings and and calculations so uh, it 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 is working uh, quite well no doubt you would uh, you would like to have the the opportunity to uh, get more more information here are our our email addresses. We have a top class email address both for 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 worldly.com and for and for topshow.com. And and of course you are also also welcome to address uh, Andrew and me uh, direct. And uh, then I think it's it, it's time for for questions and and answers. Thank you, uh, Andrew and friends, for, for this introduction of Top Clouds. Uh, like Brian said, we're now going to answer questions. Uh, some questions have already been submitted, uh, but as a reminder, you can still submit questions uh, through the questions pane in your attendee uh, control panel. Uh, and in case we don't have time to answer all the questions, uh, then we will capture it uh, and make sure that we will answer them uh, after uh, these webinars, where we will have the last, uh, the, the late, this last webinar uh, on February uh, 1st. But going to the to the questions, uh, then let's start with them. Uh, and I think the first question here uh, is about what is WSA? I don't know if you will answer that, Franz. 
I think it's uh, it, it's fair, fairly straightforward. It means uh, wet gas, sulfuric acid, and it is basically a technology to clean uh, waste waste streams, uh, either either gases or uh, or liquid uh, under production of concentrated sulfuric acid. That has been applied in a, num a number of different industries since uh, 1980. Actually, all also before that by uh, by other companies, but today the Helder Topshow is is the main supplier of uh, this this technology. Thank you, Franz. Uh, another question here: What type of catalyst do you use in the WSA production? And what do you see as dangerous contaminants that can come from the clouds? Would you answer that also, Franz? Yes, I will. There's 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 a, a catalyst that is based on 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 vanadium pentoxide, uh, like in in most other sulfuric acid plants. And uh, there are some 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 uh, some elements that can can poison the catalyst. That's mainly arsenic and 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 fluorine but uh, fortunately none of these are, are are very common in the off gases from from a clouse unit nor in the feed gas to a to a clouse unit for that matter so uh, it's it's not any any significant risk thank you Franz. Uh, another question here uh, do you have any uh, ID regarding the difference of footprint between conventional tail gas treatment unit and implementation of WSA. Uh, thank you. Uh, Andrew, would you answer that? Yeah, well, we do know that a WSA plant will be smaller than a conventional TGTU. You, you can see this just from the equipment count. You, you've lost three columns, for example, a, an associated regenerator. So there are straight away you can see there will be a plot plan saving. We don't have actual numbers to hand for this presentation. We intend on trying to get something. So when, when we send out the Q and A's with this presentation after the um, after the final one, we will have a we'll have a, some sort of sizes that we can we can provide. But yes, there'll there'll definitely be a plot plan saving. That's that's for certain. We we know we know this just from our, our experiences with building TGTUs and for how the tops are with building um, WSA plants. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, another question here, maybe for you, Franz. Uh, why is the natural gas consumption higher uh, for top clouds compared to amine based technology? Uh, there are uh, there are mainly two reasons for that. Uh, in the amine based uh, the the natural gas consumption sits in the incinerator at the very end of the plant, where you have you have a lower flow, and also uh, at that place in a in a conventional unit uh, you have only H2S, which uh, a, a which burns uh, very easily at a not too high temperature, maybe around eight eight hundred degrees C. While in the WSA you have you have a range of of different combustible compounds in the gas, uh, you have a higher flow because you have you have still all the water vapor in the in the gas, and and you need to you you need to reach around a thousand degrees C in order to make sure that all of the combustibles are are gone. Thank you, Franz, uh, for that answer. Uh, another one here. Uh, would top clouds work also well with an oxygen in which clouds? Uh, I don't know if you will also take that one, uh, Franz. Yes, I think it will. Uh, we have not, not done too, uh, too many calculations on that, but uh, as mentioned, the sulfuric acid is, is an excellent oxygen carrier. So is of course, pure oxygen. And uh, while the sulfuric acid actually lowers the, the temperature in the clouds furnace, because it's, it's an endothermic uh, process, the oxygen increases uh, the, 
at the temperature. So, so it 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 might be a very good combination. I don't know if you have any any, any supplementary comments, Andrew. Um, I guess well, the one comment to say is yeah, you've got this endothermic reaction with uh, with sulfuric acid in, in the reaction furnace. So yeah, it may end up quenching the temperature in the reaction furnace, allowing you to run hotter. So take you to a higher level of enrichment prior to having to look at something like um, like our double combustion technology. Great, thank you, uh, Andrew. Uh, a question here about corrosion. Uh, sulfuric acid stream going back to cloud furnace can cause corrosions. How do uh, we mitigate that use of special material? Uh, sulfuric acid can decompose in cloud reactor quickly, but before that, it's in a liquid phase uh, and will cause corrosion. Would you take that, Franz? Yes, I can do that. Well, all the way from the WSA condenser where the, the sulfuric acid is produced and up to the, the Klaus furnace, uh, the, the sulfuric acid will go in, in, uh, in pipes that, are, that are, are, are provided with PTFE hoses that, uh, 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 that prevents any, any corrosion at all. Then there's an, an injection lance uh, for the sulfuric acid, which which has to be made in in high quality stainless steel. But after that point, the the atomized sulfuric acid comes into a gas that is about a thousand degrees C hot, and uh, and from there on, there's no no corrosion issues because the sulfuric acid will uh, very quickly evaporate and uh, and disintegrate. Thank you, Franz, for, for that uh, answer. Uh, we have another question here. In case of the implementation of WSA downstream and existing cloud plant, uh, are many modifications required? Burners, metallurgical, metallurgic, uh, other modifications. Would you take that also, Franz? Yes, there will be some some modifications uh, 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 with the Klaus furnace. It has to be to have a, a sulfuric acid injection lens. And then there's, there's a WSA unit that should be installed uh, on, the, on the tail gas from, a, from the Klaus unit, either in place of an, of an existing tail gas unit or as a, as a new installation. But the Klaus unit, the Klaus unit itself is uh, is the same except for this 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 injection lens. Thank you. Uh, another question here, uh, maybe for you, Andrew. Uh, what happens in a top Klaus in case of a hydrogen breakthrough? Hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon. Sorry, breakthrough. hydrocarbon yeah, yeah. breakthrough. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, well, I mean, if if we see hydrocarbon in into the actual Klaus portion, it's it's no real difference to uh, uh, to other Klaus plants. Uh, it, it's pretty much just a, a normal reaction furnace, barring these lances, uh, and uh, we would expect them to be destroyed. So th there should be the right operating temperature, and as part of a design, we would ensure that those uh, those temperatures are still maintained in the reaction furnace uh, in order to get that hydrocarbon destroyed. And then otherwise, the, the carbon dioxide just passes through the plant like, like, uh, like normal. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, there is another question here. What would be the sweet spot in terms of capacity for top clouds? I don't know if, if you will take that or you, Franz. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, well, uh, from a technical point of view, you can you can design it uh, both uh, a, a very small and very big. But uh, of course, with such such uh, units, there's there's a minimum cost that uh, that that an equipment item will carry because uh, when you make it make it smaller and smaller, the 
uh, the price, uh, it doesn't go to zero. So I think that uh, if we are talking about capacities from 50 tons per day of sulfur upwards uh, to several hundred tons per day of of, of sulfur, that the top class will, it will be a very good solution. Yeah, yeah. All, all well, I, guess, I guess, I mean, our, our feeling is um, if it's, if it's the right size for an SRU TGTU, it's probably the right size for a top house. Yes. Thank you for for that answer. Uh, I guess there's one question here also. Uh, how can one revamp an old Klaus plant to increase sulfur uh, recovery efficiency? It looks simple with Scott BSR. What about WSA? Uh, I don't know if if would you answer that, Frank? Yep, I can take that. Um, if you have an existing Klaus plant and you want to put a BSR unit behind it, you, you you need to add the hydrogenation stage, you need to add the quench and everything. And this is just as simple. Instead of a BSR unit or a mine tail gas treating unit, you install uh, a WSA unit behind the incinerator. So and you recycle back sulfuric acid instead of uh, hydrogen sulfide. So it's it's just, and it's two existing type of processes, so pretty easy. Thank you, for, uh, Frank, for, for that answer. Uh, let's see, we have a, another question here. I guess that's, again, with regards to plot plan. I think we talked a bit about that before. Uh, if there's any plot plan advantages of, of top class compared to conventional. Uh, I don't know if you would just reiterate your answer. Uh, yes, so we, we don't have the uh, the exact numbers done, but we, we know from our experience that uh, uh, that a, a WSA plant on, uh, for the tail gas treating would be a smaller footprint uh, than a conventional BSR amine plant. I think that for the for the case study that we did, uh, we had a, a plot space for the WSA uh, it's ill gas treatment of around a thousand square meters. That's uh, that's that's uh, ten thousand square feet. Uh, uh, just uh, to uh, uh, to give a rough figure. Thank you, Franz. Uh, I guess we are almost running out of time, uh, but I guess we still have room for one more question. Uh, and that is, do you have any real references uh, for for top clouds? Uh, I don't know if you'll answer that, uh, Frank. Yeah, sure. That's a, a great question. I would love to answer it with yes, but unfortunately, we we don't have an actual top clouds in operation, and we're looking for a first opportunity with a customer that sees like us the benefits of the top clouds technology, which are explained in this webinar very thoroughly. We absolutely see no issues in combining these two well-established technologies and the perceived risk of maybe bringing back sulfuric acid in the main combustion chamber of an SRU is not there. Um, ASRL tests have clearly shown that the sulfuric acid instantly is vaporized and decomposed and plays no risk of, you know, causing corrosion in the existing cloud section. So. If you're up for the challenge like we are, we, uh, we'd we like to get in touch with you to uh, be the first adopter of this great technology. Rasmus, any additions to this? No, I think, uh, as you rightly said, uh, I think we don't have any, any references yet, uh, but it's two well-proven technologies that is basically just put together. Uh, and then the only new thing is this is a small uh, sulfuric acid injection back into the uh, Klaus reaction furnace, uh, which is of course something that, that we have done internally also in the, in the WSA plant for our spent acid regeneration. Uh, and like uh, Franz and Andrew described in the presentation, uh, has also been verified by, by external companies uh, as Alberta uh, Sulfur uh, Limited in, in Canada. Uh, so, so no, uh, we are ready to, to go big scale with this, no doubt about that. And we also have have WSA units that uh, that actually uh, handles uh, 
a tail gas from a Klaus unit. So, so, so that's also uh, not a new thing. Certainly. We are unfortunately running out of time, so we don't have uh, more time to, to answer questions. Uh, but I would like to thank everyone for attending today. Uh, and you will receive uh, a follow-up email shortly uh, after the last webinar session that you'll have with the Q&As from all the sessions. Uh, but in case you have new questions or would like to receive the, the link uh, to the recording of the session, uh, you can connect to us via the following mail connections, which is basically topclaus uh, at topsuit.com or topclaus at wally.com. So on behalf of uh, both uh, Comprimo and Helder Topse, uh, and of course our present presenters, uh, I would like to thank you for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.